Hello, my name is Darlene Meckelberg and I'm a diabetes clinical specialist with Medtronic Diabetes in Canada. And it's my pleasure to welcome you back to this education video series. This video is the first of two short videos focused on continuous glucose monitoring or CGM as it's often called, and will provide various tips and tricks to help you successfully wear your CGM with your Minimed insulin pump. Just a couple of points before we get started. Um, this video has been prepared for information and educational purposes only. And so please continue to seek the advice of your doctor or other qualified healthcare professionals for any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. In addition, for any external website that I mentioned, please keep in mind that Medtronic does not review or control the content. In this first CGM video, I'm going to walk you through the support options available to you, as well as tips about sensor insertion and taping, glucose alerts, calibration, and transmitter care. There are many CGM supports available to you, and first and foremost is your own diabetes healthcare team. Contact with them may look and feel a bit different right now, but most teams are available by phone, email, and some are offering virtual options as well. In addition, please know that your local Medtronic representatives are available to support you by phone, email, and virtually if preferred. And we're here to answer questions and support the use of your Medtronic system. If you don't know who your local Medtronic representatives are, you can find out by contacting Medtronic Canada directly or by asking your diabetes healthcare team. There are also Medtronic diabetes support pages available uh, at the website noted below, which can be accessed at your convenience. On this website, you're going to find training modules and answers to commonly asked questions, as well as electronic versions of the training guides that were shipped to you with your insulin pump. Pictured here is one of the Minimed 630G and Minimed 670G CGM training guides as an example. Lastly, our technical support line is toll free and is available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year to provide the support when you need it. The various tips discussed during this session are primarily focused on the Guardian Sensor 3 and the Minimed 670G system. However, some of the tips you may still find helpful even if you're using a previous generation Minimed system. Let's first talk about sensor insertion. Medtronic glucose sensors are approved for wear for, uh, on the abdomen for all users, and additionally for 670G users, the Guardian Sensor 3 is approved for wear on the buttocks for ages 7 to 13, or on the arm if you're 14 years or older. If you are using the abdomen, your sensor should be inserted at least two inches away from your navel and one inch away from your pump infusion site, and standing up during insertion is also helpful. You want to try to avoid inserting into areas that may rub on your clothing or where your body naturally bends, so generally above or below the belt line works well. It's also recommended to stay away from scarred areas, stretch marks, or hardened tissue. In terms of how long a glucose sensor will last, the Enlight sensor for the Minimed 630G has up to six day wear, and the Guardian sensor 3 for the Minimed 670G has up to seven day wear. Early sensor loss may happen if your site has been accidentally bumped, pulled, or has lifted. And if you experience early sensor loss on a repetitive basis, despite careful insertion and taping, please contact your local Medtronic representative or technical support so that we can help you identify why the early sensor loss may be happening. For Guardian Sensor 3 and 670G users, Many users who struggle with using the abdomen find success by moving to the back of the arm, provided they are 14 years of age or older. Insertion of a sensor on the back of the arm generally requires the assistance of another person, so you may want to consider asking a friend or family member to help you just to ensure careful insertion and taping. The light to touch method encourages you to place the loaded sorter lightly on the surface of your skin during insertion. And once the sensor is inserted, just remember to hold the sorter in place against your body for at least five seconds to allow the adhesive time to stick to your skin. And then slowly pull the sorter away before you begin removing the introducer needle and taping the sensor. 
Now let's talk about taping your sensor because the goal of taping is to ensure that it's secured in place for the entire period of time of your sensor wear. Each box of five sensors that you receive has 10 sensor over tapes included, so you do have two tapes for each sensor. The picture here is taken from the 670G Getting Started Guide for CGM and shows the correct application of two oval tapes on the sensor and transmitter. If you need more specifics, I'd like to refer you to your training guide or video uh, to help you apply the over tapes successfully. If you find that the oval tapes are not holding the sensor in place for the entire duration of the sensor life, you may need additional taping products to help secure your sensor. And these products can be used at the time of insertion or a few days into sensor wear if you notice that your tapes are lifting or peeling at all. You can access additional taping products such as Tegaderm or IB3000 online at the Medtronic eShop and the website is at the bottom or purchase them at your local pharmacy. Other site securing options are using additional adhesive products that can be painted or wiped on the skin prior to sensor insertion and taping. And examples of this type of product um, are skin tack or mastosol, although there's other products available. And basically these products increase the stickiness of the adhesives, which increase the success of securing your sensor site. For these products, it's recommended to paint your skin in a circle like a donut leaving the middle or center area free from the product and basically what happens is then the sensor passes through the skin in the middle of the donut and is not exposed to the adhesive product as this may affect sensor performance. Skin reactions to adhesives may occur for a small number of you and if this is the case for you please speak with your diabetes team or your local Medtronic representative to discuss options. And finally, I'd like to mention for sensor sites on the arm, you may also reinforce your sensor site with non-adhesive options, and there are products that are similar to a tensor and can be wrapped around the arm. The next topic I'd like to cover is CGM glucose alerts. So let's start with looking at trend arrows. On your screen, you'll see examples of what your CGM readings look like on your pump, depending on whether you're wearing a 630G on the left or a 670G on the right. Please note that your sensor glucose number, or SG, is not the same as your blood glucose number, or BG. They will often be close to one another, but rarely will they match exactly. When using CGM, it's recommended to focus on your sensor glucose trends, essentially where you are, where you're going, and how quickly. And your SG number is updated every five minutes and may be associated with trend arrows uh, if your glucose is rising or falling. To review what these arrows mean, uh, one arrow up or down indicates that your sensor glucose has been rising or falling one to two millimoles in the past 20 minutes. Two arrows up or down indicate two to three millimoles in the past 20 minutes. And three arrows up or down indicate rapid change with your sensor glucose moving more than three millimoles in the past 20 minutes. It's important to have an understanding of your trend arrows so that you can observe or make changes to food, insulin, or other behaviors to help you manage your glucose. Please note it's also important to confirm your sensor glucose readings with the blood glucose test prior to making any treatment decisions. Now let's look at another CGM glucose alert tip, specifically which alerts, high or low, are available to you. For the next four slides, we'll focus on just on the Minimed 670G. The wonderful part of wearing CGM is not only being able to watch your glucose trends, but also the ability to personalize your glucose alerts. CGM glucose alerts should be discussed with your healthcare team and can be changed at any time. One of the most important things to consider when wearing CGM is to set your alerts based on whether or not the alert requires you to take action. If you set the alerts with this in mind, it's going to help you choose settings that are most helpful to you. As you view the picture on the screen, you'll see that you have the ability to set both high and low glucose alerts. You can set up to eight time segments for your day, which allows you to set different alerts for day and night. Let's focus on just a few of the alerts available. 
So on the high side, on the high SG alert side, you may consider setting the alert on high, which notifies you when you hit your high limit or your alert before high, which will notify you when your SG is approaching your high limit. Conversely, on the low SG alert side, you may consider setting the alert on low, which notifies you when you hit your low limit, or the alert before low, which will notify you 30 minutes before you reach the low limit. Suspend before low stops basal insulin delivery approximately 30 minutes before you reach your low glucose limit. This setting is only available in manual mode on the Minimed 670G. Auto mode is going to be discussed in the next CGM video. When you're new to CGM, it's often suggested not to turn on many glucose alerts, but to start by turning on suspend before low and then watching the trends of your glucose. Once you gain some experience with CGM, you may decide to add on the alerts, low or high, that you think would be most helpful for your diabetes. The final CGM glucose alert tip we'll talk about today is silencing the alerts for a short period of time. The alert silence option is available in the audio options menu in the, six, in the Minimed 670G. Simply select the option in order to silence your high alerts, your high and low alerts, or all sensor alerts, and then you can choose how long you wish to silence your alerts, which can be anywhere between 30 minutes and 24 hours and can be canceled at any time. While your alerts are silenced, you will still be able to view the alert on your pump screen and your notification alert light will still flash until you clear the alert. Please note that the alert silence does not silence all CGM alerts in the 670G. For example, the urgent low glucose alert uh, will let you know if your SG drops to 2.8 millimoles and that cannot be silenced. Let's talk about two more important topics before we wrap up this video. The first is starting a new sensor and then the second is about calibrating. The first recommendation is to insert your new sensor early in the day and this is going to help you manage calibration timing on the first day of your sensor and may reduce overnight alerting. You'll receive a calibrate now alert after the sensor warm up period, which can be anywhere between 40 minutes and two hours after starting a new sensor. And then you'll be asked to calibrate again at six hours and 12 hours post warm up. Following that, you'll be required to calibrate at least every 12 hours. Generally, calibrations, uh, three to four calibrations per day, are recommended before meals and at bedtime. Sometimes, however, you may get additional calibration requests, which is perfectly normal, and the system is simply telling you that it needs more information to function properly. After calibrating, if you receive a calibration not accepted alert, your pump will prompt you to enter a blood glucose in 15 minutes. I would suggest waiting a bit longer for 30 to 60 minutes, then wash and dry your hands thoroughly, test your BG and calibrate again. Another calibration tip would be in order to minimize the number of alerts that you get from your pump, you may also wish to turn off the calibration reminder alert. Our final topic today is taking care of your transmitter, specifically charging, storing and cleaning it. When you're charging your transmitter, it is important to charge it fully before your first use and then between sensor changes, and this can take up to two hours. You'll notice that when you connect your transmitter to the charger base, there will be a green light that flashes on the charger, and your transmitter is fully charged when the green light turns off. When you remove the transmitter from the charger, a green light will flash on the transmitter. This indicates that it has enough battery power to be connected to your sensor. So if you don't see the green light flash on the transmitter when you remove it, place it back on the charger until it's fully charged and try again. The charging base uses uh, one AAA battery, which will need to be changed if you see a red light flashing on the charger when you attempt to charge your transmitter. If you choose to store your transmitter and unused sensors for any reason, please do so in a clean and dry location at room temperature. During a time of storage, your transmitter must be recharged every 60 days. 
Um, don't store the transmitter on the charger for more than 60 days, otherwise the batter, battery may be permanently damaged. Just simply disconnect and reconnect to the charger to recharge again before use. Please also pay attention to the expiry date on your sensors, which is shown on the side of your sensor box. Transmitters have a tendency to get dirty and sticky from tapes, so cleaning your transmitter is necessary. And a test plug is included in your CGM kit, and it is used to create a watertight seal so that you can clean your transmitter. Once your transmitter is connected to the test plug, you can use soap and water or other adhesive remover products to remove the dirt and any remnant adhesive. And then after cleaning, place the transmitter on a clean and dry cloth and allow it to air dry for two to three minutes. This brings the first video of success with sensing to a close and I hope the information we covered today was helpful to you. Thank you so much for your time and have a wonderful day.